Hello everyone, my guest today is Gustav von Saido. He's the CEO and co-founder of a company called BERT, where they're building a data, they're building data intelligence companies. In a previous life, he hustled in e-commerce, developed award-winning marketing campaigns, and spent way too much time at advertising and internet technology conferences, presenting at events such as uh, Kane's Lions, Web 2.0, Demo, and TechCrunch 50. All right, Gustav, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, I am. Good. All right, tell us about BERT. What are you guys doing? How do you make money? So uh, BERT is actually a company that develops, well, marketing tech companies. But on a day-to-day, -day, I run our customer engagement platform, which is focused on the ad industry. So we help our customers automate routine tasks and uh, identify opportunities to be more successful. So typical next-generation intelligence company, I would say. Okay, and what's the revenue model? Is it a percent of spend or is it a SaaS model or what? So all our companies have a SaaS model. So typically mid-market or enterprise customers. And what do you mean all your companies? Are you spinning companies out of this or what? Yeah. So we originated as a uh, out of an agency, built a product and built another product and uh, then sort of ran that as a platform. But now we decided to sort of chop it up into pieces, which has been, well, significant for our growth curve. Okay. So, um, I'm trying to figure out, I want to focus on one thing right now. So maybe let's focus on kind of the one baby you have that's doing the best in terms of maybe revenue or growth. Which one do you want to focus on? Yeah. So let's talk about the customer engagement platform. Uh, the other sort of companies we have GMs for. So okay. that's the one that I spend my time on these days. So what's the URL for that? What's it called? So that's actually a, a URL called above, so above.ai, which is not launched yet. So it's going to be launched in the next week or two. Okay, now, so have you pre-sold anything or it's pre-revenue, pre-product, pre-everything? So we uh, carved it out last year, so we ran it as a product line. So it's doing about $3 million right now. Okay. So it's growing about 140, 150% year over year. And, and describe kind of what it does. It sounds like it's kind of operating right now, but it doesn't have a, a website yet. So what's it do? So it's a uh, so it's a product line out of our sort of uh, one of our products, and it integrates uh, all our customer systems and provide well, uh, I guess, sort of smart alerts and automated reporting for ad sales. So typical users would be uh, someone within ad sales trying to figure out what to do next. Mm -hmm. What are the actions that I can take to sort of grow my business or sort of focus on the opportunities that have a high likelihood of closing and things like that. So, so is this sit on top of like the CRM, the salesperson walks in, in the morning and you tell them who they should call first or what? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, CRM is definitely one of it, but it's also like ad serving systems, measurement systems. So I'd say typically we integrate with about 50 or 60 systems on a reasonable size customer. So okay. like the media companies that we work with have a very fragmented sort of sales and marketing and ad stack. Mm -hmm. And how many customers are on above.ai today? So it's about a hundred or so sort of individual companies, but uh, many of them sort of are in within sort of media groups. So we have about three of the top 10 media groups in the world that use the platform in some capacity right now. Okay. And you mentioned a 3 million run rate. So, you know, 3 million divided by 12 monthly, that's 250. And that means each customer, your hundred are paying about what, two, you know, 2,500 bucks a month for the tool? Yeah, but I, I typically our contracts are sort of structured on the enterprise level, so uh, I, it'll be like two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year contracts. Got it. Okay, good. And then walk me through. Uh, I want to understand more, kind of why you decide to break all these products out. It, it, how does Bert interface with Above? Yeah, so we, I mean, we wedged it initially between our underlying customer data platform and sort of this engagement system that sat on top, because a lot of customers were asking us to sort of. Um, get systems, uh, get sort of connect to systems that were not our platform. So we had a data platform and we built sort of tools on top of that. And then it turns out that people also wanted to connect it to their CRM. And then we had customers that said, well, I already have a data platform, so I don't need yours. So at that point, we sort of figured that if we divide the company up in two, it should make it easier to grow either one of them. I and see. once we started that, then we realized that, hey, you know, this is actually two companies, and then we started spinning things out. Got it. Which so Bert's, made it Bert's easier the to data grow. play. Yes, yeah. yes. Yep. Okay, good. So it makes it easier to grow. Give me more economics on, on above.ai. So churn is critical in a SaaS business. What's above.ai's churn? So we're about 140% net revenue retention. Okay, 104 or 140? 140. Okay, and what, where is most of the expansion revenue coming from? What are people upgrading for? So it's either you grow it to more companies within the same sort of account. So you grow it from, you know, 10 markets to 17 markets if you're in a local media company, 
or you expand it in, in terms of adding more integrations and uh, more capabilities. Okay, good. So, so 140% net revenue retention. What about overall growth rate? So today you're 3 million ARR. Take me back to you know June 2017. What were you then? So we're doing about half that or a million or so. Oh, that's great. Okay, so healthy growth. And um, it sounds like a lot of that growth is, would you say more of that growth is coming from expansion revenue or adding new customers altogether? So, I mean, we've, we, we've been focused on building like a, a strong core customer base of blue chip customers that could act as references. So it's only recently that we started to do like uh, prospecting and, and uh, lead gen to the extent we're used to. Okay, good. So most, most of the revenue expansion is then coming from exactly that expansion revenue, not, not brand new customers. Yeah, so about half, half, I'd say. Okay, good. And um, when did you start this product, even if it wasn't named above back in the day, when did you launch this particular product? So we carted out into a separate product line about a year and a half or late 16-ish. Uh, and, and we sort of broke it up into a separate team mid last year. And that's where we really started to see great growth. So what's the team now just dedicated to above? How many people? So we have a 20 or so person team and uh, it's mostly engineering and, and product. And to an extent, we have like sales development and, and prospecting roles that we just started adding. And now we're building out sort of a geographical footprint with, with uh, our office here in New York because of it. I think uh, 70 or 80 percent of the revenues for this product line is in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious where you spend most of your time. You've got the parent company, you've got Bert, you've got Above and a bunch of other babies. It sounds like, too, we haven't even talked about. What does your day look like? So, I mean, typical month, I'd be a uh, week, uh, week or 10 days in New York, and I'll be uh, equal time split between our two Swedish offices. But we have great people that sort of uh, manning the ship there. Mm -hmm. So so I'm not, uh, I mean, that's to a degree, I think that's been a been a sort of a silver lining because I'm I'm I like getting into the weeds of stuff, but when I'm not physically there, you have to delegate, right? Yeah. So are you the G? Like, are you the are you the kind of a CEO of above? Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm the CEO of above, um, but we just just hired a new GM for to manage our other uh, sort of portfolio companies. Got it. And uh, have you bootstrapped this or raised capital? So we did raise capital, but it was a very long time ago, uh, and and uh, we sort of managed to hit a wall there. So we we had to go from thirty five people to fifteen people there for a while. Uh, what year <laughs> was that? that? When was the nasty year? I was twelve, thirteen. Okay. I was. I can't. I can't. I can hardly recall anything from from those two years. You but, want to erase uh, it from your memory? Yeah, yeah. No, so, it, took, it takes you way longer than you're willing to admit to yeah. sort of get the get the sort of to to. Stop thinking about that as the worst part of your life. But so now it's more lesson learned. So how much did you end up raising back in the day? So we raised a three million dollar seed, and then we completely failed at raising a sort of a decent size Series A, and we ended up doing like a three million bridge, and that was about it. A debt debt bridge there, or was it equity? No, it was, yeah, so it was actually convertible debt uh, that we ended up uh, well repaying. That's great. Uh, so you just you, you convertible debt. They give you some cap. They give you three million. There's a six percent interest, and you said, you know what, we're growing now. We can just pay it back. Pay back the interest. And the well, it wasn't that. It wasn't that uh, that straightforward, right? They we'd raised it on one plan, and then uh, we ended up uh, we ended up not executing on that. <laughs> so it was a bit of a it was a, a couple of board meetings that were not you know uh, uh, the the smoothest ride. But I think we're all friends now. Oh, Gustav, maybe I misunderstood you. Did you take the initial three million in equity and basically said we're screwed? We don't want to do a down round. We can't raise. Can we convert this to a three million dollar basically debt insurance? Ah, uh, no, no. Wow, no, no, no. We uh, we did this three million initially, and then we started. We added on top of that, so we had a convertible debt stack, and uh, that we ended up. Uh, sort of repaying or restructuring at least. I see. Why did to you have to a degree? Why did you have to restructure that debt though? I thought you said you just paid back the interest and the principal. Yeah, it was complicated. Put it that okay. Way. Okay. Uh, uh, it was. I mean, I was really a, uh, a tough time. We the business model that we that we went for. A couple of American companies ended up raising a ton of money uh, at a, a very few. early stage. Uh, excuse me. Name a few of those. Uh, Moat, Integral Ad Science, Double Verify, uh, that all did fantastically well. I mean, it turned out that ad verification, which was the product that we had, uh, like that that space ended up being uh, significant in terms of exits. But it was very tough as a European company to to uh, to make a dent. It was very Americanized in terms of the type of partners that you needed and the type of funding that you needed. So 
Uh, I mean, right after that, one, once we sort of dismantled that product, the first thing we did was to start by trying to, to I mean, get into the U.S. market. That took a while, but once that started to hit, it was, it, I mean, it's been a great ride for us the last three years. Well, so those early equity investors, I imagine they're still on the cap table then, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they're happy now. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's how it works. It's a roller they coaster. Are, they, they are, they are. I mean, I mean, it's found money to an, to an extent, but it's funny how, how quickly people's ambitions go up, right? Once you, I mean, right now, I mean, uh, you, 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 you used to have uh, an asset that you thought was worthless and now you have, yeah, you're an investor in multiple companies that are all doing well. Do you have different kind of founders agreement for each of these companies and different cap tables or they're all kind of the same thing still from a legal perspective? It's all, it's, yeah, it's all rolled up, uh, rolled up to one. Uh, but uh, I mean, we, we've had a lot of interest both in, in terms of, of selling off one of the, a couple of the companies or, or, or taking on new investments, which would obviously change that. But we'll see. I mean, it's fairly, to be honest, it's fairly new for us that, that we're doing this well, uh, or it's sort of, we've been doing well for the last three years, but it didn't feel as we were doing, you know, reasonably well until you know this year yeah the second it, it you feel the, the second you feel you're doing well is when you get your ass kicked so so stay yeah, paranoid yeah i mean the, the parent the paranoia is still there right for a long time so uh, so we're probably on the on the verge of, of, of uh, becoming bankrupt now i guess uh, uh, there you without go. knowing it yeah so uh, <laughs> so this uh, above is doing three million what's the overall number what do all the companies together do so we did about five and some and change last year okay so above uh, is the number one thing yeah, it is now. It is now. I mean, it's fairly reason that that it sort of broke out, though. Yeah. What are some of the other? I mean, are there? Are they, I'm curious. Look, I buy software companies, so I'm curious. Are there any of the other assets that are doing the one or two million there that that you're considering selling right now? And if so, what do they do? Uh, we're not considering selling them at all, actually. I mean, okay. it's it's sort of the sort of customer data management space has been you know incredibly interesting the last year, year and a half, uh, with all these privacy regulations coming in and a lot of companies understanding that you need to uh, become smarter in terms of how you integrate and utilize your data. So I, I think we're long on that. Uh, and we have a lot of lessons learned in terms of how to build companies in that space. Uh, and I think we have a fantastic team that's sort of that's starting to grow these businesses that were uh, sort of that portfolio of companies. What are you paying so, to acquire uh, new customers on the above product with your CAC? Uh, it's about a hundred or so. Okay. Uh, probably for the enterprise and for the sort of more mid market, it's about uh, 15 or 20. You're talking about a hundred bucks? A hundred thousand. I was about to say a hundred bucks to acquire yeah. a $2,500 a no, month no, customer no. is cheap. Yeah, sorry about that. No, so about a hundred uh, thousand or so and yeah. about 20, 25 perhaps, or, or uh, slightly less for the mid-market. I'm, I'm always surprised that people don't segment their customer acquisition costs more. Yeah, yeah, they generally do. I, I On the show, I generally force people into an average, but most of them behind the yeah. scenes, they, they do a lot of cohort analysis. So what what is your, if you spend 100 grand to acquire a customer, what's your payback period look like on that? Do you wait 12 months or what? Immediately, I mean, it's cash up front, it's enterprise software. Sorry, not on a cash basis, <laughs> on, on actual deferred revenue basis. Is it 12 uh, months? Oh. No, no, no. Significantly less. I mean, I mean, I'd say that sweet spot customers would be about two to fifty a year. Okay, got it. So six, uh, call it six months, something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, the economics definitely hold. Yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, I, I sort of the phase we're in right now is to build out the scalable enterprise sales function. It's quite expensive. So. You said so 20, 20 people right now, right? Yeah, or and, and change. Got it. And how many of those are inside sales or sales in general? So about four people in that that uh, who uh, who were evaluating based on our growth. Put yeah. It that way. Yeah. Last question here: Are you considering uh, raising any capital just for the above product right now, or no? You're staying away from that. Uh, I think that we have a couple of more months in it. We'll see. Why, I mean, I think we we feel like uh, I mean we're growing really well. Customers are happy, and we want to get that sort of out on the separate brand and sort of see how that sticks. Uh, I. I sort of feel like the only reason to raise money in, in SaaS if you have significant competitive risk. And right now, I sort of feel like we're winning the deals that we want and, and uh, customers seem to be sticking around. That's great. All right, Gustav, good stuff. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, the score takes care of itself. The score takes care of itself? Yep. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Mm, Pete Gassner, the Viva guy. Okay. <laughs> Good. I love you. <laughs> Number three, is, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Uh, Google Sheets. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Eight. That's good. And what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? 
uh, married with a daughter, two year old. Oh, great! So, okay, good. Eight, so, so eight is probably the total, but not in a stretch. Yeah, <laughs> Ma- married with one kiddo, and how old are you? Uh, thirty eight. Thirty eight. Last question: What do you wish your twenty year old self knew? Uh, that working with the internet could be a real job. <laughs> Guys, working with the internet could be could be a real job. You heard it from Gustav again. Had a lot of success building about a $5 million company, but many, many different product lines. Recently decided to basically split these out. BERT is the data play. Above.ai is the SaaS play that ties more to sales and marketing people and CRM data, customer data specifically. They've got 100 customers on that platform, doing about $3 million bucks in ARR at this point. That's up from a million just a year ago. So healthy growth rate. Uh, $3 million raised for the parent company. Again, this spinoff uh, occurred in 2016. Now the team of 20 folks dedicated 140% net revenue retention year on year. So healthy stuff. Gustav, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, man. See ya.